Now for Mr. Paulos' last claim. That's Faustos, as in Faustian bargain. Right, Faustos. Earl, play the next video. The notion that we use a decentralized system with a multitude of vendors that impose various checks and balances on one another, like grinding gears, is unfortunately a myth. The election system is actually more like the Ferris wheel Heinrich nearly crashed into. Elegant, streamlined, and interconnected. And there are three things that power the election system. Albert sensors, FirstNet, and integrated software. All 50 states have entered into agreements with the Center for Internet Security, a private organization with virtually no oversight that has partnered with the Department of Homeland Security to deploy Albert sensors. These are computers that reside behind county and precinct firewalls under the auspices of protecting state elections from cyber threats. The agreements provide CIS with everything needed to monitor all aspects of elections real time. Second, AT&T's FirstNet cellular network, along with other telecom giants, provide direct connections for that monitoring behind those same county and precinct firewalls. Those direct connections exploded across the United States after Barack Obama's administration designated elections as part of the nation's critical infrastructure. Which leads me to the third thing that powers the Ferris wheel of integration. Third-party corporate vendors utilizing all-inclusive software connected to the internet that can modify or change all the election data that the Albert Sensors and FirstNet allow you to monitor. The big players are BPro, Noink, 10X, VR Systems, Electionware, and several others. But don't let the different names and logos fool you. They all share similar functional capabilities. Here is how the election rigging process works. First, money is donated to campaigns and political action committees, non-governmental organizations. However, investigators are also finding money subsidized off the backs of the taxpayer, being funneled overseas through entities like FTX, only to be laundered back to political campaigns through unwitting U.S. citizens whose personal identifying information is stolen to accomplish the laundering operation. The next module every integrated software provider has direct access to is voter registration. Voter rolls are inflated at strategic times and act like a credit line to the swamp candidates. During the early voting period, and even on election day, metrics are provided through the integrated software's absentee ballot tracking and the e-pollbook modules. With this information, adjustments inflating the voter rolls is happening right before elections. Ballots can be printed and even pre-filled ahead of time, many of which are produced out of thin air, are picked up at NGO headquarters by ballot mules. The mules will strategically deliver illegal, fraudulent ballots to drop boxes paid for by Mark Zuckerberg, most of which have no surveillance cameras. Election workers retrieve the ballots from the drop boxes and run them through the tabulators. In the event that voter turnout wildly exceeds the predictions or modeling of bad actors, the tabulators can be hacked or the integrated software used in the states can simply overwrite the tabulated results. To accomplish the needed correction, state election officials will be told to stop counting. The election reporting system will be rebooted to create new set points. Once losing candidates will emerge victorious. And during the dark hours of the night and in the days following the election, fraudulent ballots will be brought in until they more or less match the digital manipulation. Delayed reporting of the official results will now be asserted as the new normal.